So this is a joint work with uh, Romaric Ludina from IMT in France. So just a brief recap of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is made of three ingredients, in my opinion. Transaction, the Nakamoto Consensus Protocol, and the peer-to-peer -peer network. So it turns out that transactions represent the state of the cryptocurrency system. Um, this is a data structure that allows uh, individuals, a user, to exchange uh, bitcoins against goods. And there is no encrypted information uh, in the transaction so that every, everyone can check that the transaction is valid or not. And so when a user wants to create a transaction, it just in, uh, insert as input a list of references to past transactions in which his account uh, were credited. And as an output, he will insert a references uh, of account that will be credited by this uh, transaction. Actually, an account or an exo is just a pair of private and public key and an amount of, um, of bitcoins. And so to, um, to uh, show that you are the legitimate owner of uh, an account, you just need to exhibit a digital signature that verify a public key. And so a user can uh, create as many uh, identities or as many UTXO as he wants without relying on any uh, public key infrastructure. Of course, a digital signature doesn't prevent uh, double spending attack, the fact that a user will uh, create several transactions with exactly the same coin. And so the very nice idea of uh, Bitcoin is to allow every individual to maintain the consistent and immutable uh, view of the sequence of the uh, of the sequence of all the transactions which have been created since the inception of the system, and it's 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 built thanks to the Nakamoto consensus protocol. So the Nakamoto consensus protocol is made of two ingredients: the leader election, which is actually a probabilistic competition among miners to be the first one to create a block. And a very simple and local rule, which is uh, um, run when you have uh, conflicting uh, blocks locally. And so every, uh, every miner has access to a probabilistic oracle, which is implemented through the proof of work mechanism. And this um, ingredient allows to think, it allows to synchronize the creation of blocks and to prevent civil attacks. And this is achieved mainly through incentive, um, an incentive correct behavior through um, money uh, creation. And so when you, uh, it, it happens that you have um, a conflicting blocks that uh, you receive locally, then the very simple rule that you will run is to select the chain that requires the greatest amount of, of work. And actually by the very random nature of proof of work mechanism, yeah, then you will have a chain that will be extended more than the other, and this is which chain, which is a blockchain of, of Bitcoin, the current one, actually. And the third ingredient in Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer network. So the peer-to-peer -peer network is simply a topology for, which is formed from, uh, through a randomized process. There are no coordinate, uh, coordinating it, uh, entity, which is in charge of... Uh, uh, inserting nodes in the system or in charge of uh, um, updating the routing tables of the nodes. And the broadcast is uh, simply based on the gossip uh, information to a neighbor's link. But there are two important properties which are required for Bitcoin to work. First, connectivity, meaning that each single node of the system should be able to receive any broadcast information, transaction and block. This is very important. And uh, the second property is low latency. And this allows Bitcoin to uh, maintain a very small ratio between the message transmission time and the time it takes to create two successive blocks. And this ratio must be very, very small so that the probability of fork uh, is kept uh, small. Um, Fortunately, the proof-of-work mechanism allows to keep this ratio uh, always small. This is very important. The bad thing is that because you maintain a totally sequence of transactions, then the number of transactions which is confirmed by, the, by per second is very small. And so what we would like to do in this work 
is to keep all the nice property of Bitcoin, but only to focus on improving the latency of transaction. So what we would like to do is to switch from a chain of block, like that, to a directed acyclic graph of blocks, like that. And the property we'd like to have is of, are the following one. First, what we would like is that the ledger uh, be a graph of block, a directed acyclic graph of block, and not a chain of block extracted from a graph, which is different. The second property we'd like is that miners should not be able to um, predict the chain of the graph to which their block will be appended. And this is very important because it will prevent an adversary to devote all its computational power to the growing of a given chain. The third property we'd like is that transactions should be partitioned over the graph so that this parallelism in the graph is effective. And the first, uh, fourth uh, property we'd like is that the graph structure evolves according to transaction demand. So when there is a peak in transaction demand, the graph should grow dynamically. And when there is a drop in the transaction demand, the graph should uh, drop in size dynamically. And of course, exactly as in Bitcoin, what we'd like is that all these features should be verifiable by anyone and at any time. Okay. So we adopt exactly the same model as in Bitcoin, meaning that we assume a permissionless system. We assume that the adversary doesn't own more than 50% of the uh, network computational power. We assume that node have access to safe cryptographic primitives. We also assume that each object, transaction and block is uniquely, um, as a unique uh, identifier. And finally, we assume that we don't have any public uh, key infrastructure. Okay, well, I will give you two very uh, easy definitions, but it's important for the following of the, of the presentation. So a chain is a sequence, a chain B1, B2, BC, uh, is a sequence of blocks starting from a block B1 and ending at block BC, such that each block of the sequence points to a block and this block belongs to the sequence. Each block in the sequence is pointed by a block, and this block belongs to the sequence. And the, the first one doesn't point to any block in the sequence, and the last block is pointed by a block which doesn't belong to the sequence. So this is a chain. And this, so it means that, I don't know if you can see that. Yes, yes. So this is a chain, this is a chain, but this is not a chain, because this guy points to this block, which is in chain, but also to this block, which is in chain. Oops, sorry. So, yeah, so these are chain, chain, and this kind of thing. Okay, the second definition is uh, a simple one, too. So you consider a chain, uh, B1, B2, BC, and this chain must, um, uh, must have at least C main blocks. C main is a system parameter, okay? 5, 10, 100, whatever you want, okay? And you define the load of a block as the ratio between the number of bytes of this block over the maximum uh, number of bytes of a block. For instance, one megabyte before segwit, okay? And you say that a block is overloaded if its load exceeds some given threshold L big gamma. And you say that this uh, block is underloaded if it's load undershoot, some given threshold L gamma. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. And you say, okay, so now uh, a block is a splitable block if the average load of the semi last block of the chain uh, exceeds uh, the uh, overloaded threshold. You say that a block is a mergeable block if the average load of the semin block of the chain uh, undershoot uh, the uh, underload threshold. And a block which is neither a splitable block nor a mergeable block is called um, a regular block. Okay, this is all the definition I want to give you. And this is the thing we'd like to build, this ledger. So initially, you have this uh, Genesis block, like in uh, Bitcoin. 
And this Genesis block is labeled with an empty string. Okay. And the Genesis block will contain all the pending tra or pending transaction whose identifier is prefixed by the label. So like in Bitcoin, any pending transaction. And blocks are constructed exactly like in Bitcoin, and they are appended to the Genesis block. And, that's, and all the blocks of the chain are, were, uh, carry the same label. Okay? At some point, the transaction demand increases for at least same in blocks. Okay? And so you will have a splitable block. And this splitable block must, be, uh, must give rise to two split chains. And each block of the split chain will inherit the label of the splitable block from which uh, it is issued, to which is concatenated zero. And this split chain inherits the label of, its, of the splitable uh, chain from which it is issued, to which is concatenated one. And in this split chain, uh, you will have the transaction whose identifier is prefixed by the label. So in this split chain, you will have only transaction that start with zero in the identifier, and here that start with one. Okay, so you partition the transaction. And, the transaction, and if the transaction demand continue to increase, then you will have a cascade of split chain. Okay, at some point, I don't know, we are in October, uh, uh, Christmas is over, so the transaction demand will, will decrease, will drop. And so at some point, the transaction, the, the blocks will be uh, underloaded, and you will buy, you will have a mergeable block, and so this mergeable block um, will uh, merge with a mergeable block in a sibling chain. A sibling chain is just is just a chain which carries the same label as a, as this one except for the last digit, and both mergeable block will give rise to a, a merge uh, chain whose label will be inherited from the longest prefix among both labels. And this is exactly what we want to build. So this is our JAG ledger. Okay, so now I didn't say, I didn't present you how we choose a predecessor or this kind of thing. Okay. My first property was that I do not want that the predecessor of a block is predictable, just to prevent the adversary to focus on a given chain. So I am a miner, and I want to build a block, and I would like to be able to, to determine wh who is the predecessor of my block. So how is it done? So when, I, uh, when a miner wants to create a block, he will insert in the header of its block a kind of commitment on the local state of its ledger. And this commitment is as follows. So you will have um, a set of tuples, and in each tuple you will have three information. You will have um, a reference to each leaf block of the, of the local ledger, so this one, this one, etc. Okay. If this leaf block is a regular block, then the label here will L1 prime will be equal to L1. If this leaf block is a splitable block, you will have two such uh, tuples, one where L prime one is equal to L one concatenated to zero, and the other one is concatenated to one, okay? And if it's a mergeable block, you will have the same thing, this label to the leaf block, and the label of the next block that should be um, appended to it will, be, will have the same label except for the last digit, okay? Now, what the miner will do, he will take the pending transaction he has, he will partition them according to, their, to the label of, the, of his label L prime, so that each partition uh, contains all the transactions whose identifier is prefixed by this label L prime. And he will compute the Merkle root of this um, partition of this transaction. Okay. So this is the header of the block. Okay, this is not the end of the story. And now um, he will exactly as in Bitcoin, he will compute the proof of work uh, on this header. Okay, and the predecessor, so 
this is a mutable, okay, by definition. And the predecessor of the block will be the leaf block in the graph, which is the closest to the hash of the new created block. Oops, sorry. Yeah, of the new created block, actually the last D bit of the hash of the new created uh, header, uh, where D is the maximum number of bits of the of the bit string of the label of the of the of the leaf of the leaf block, okay, and the distance is just the numerical XOR value, okay. So just with an example, so assume you are, uh, you are the miner and you want to uh, append your your block. So what you will do, you will create your header as I told you just before with B00 and the label of the first uh, leaf block, etc., etc. And then uh, you will uh, compute the proof of work. Assume that this is this string. You will take the last three digit, with one, and you will compute for each leaf block, you will compute the distance between the label of this leaf block and this three uh, digit, okay? And the winner will be the leaf block, which is closer to this, um, to this uh, hash block. Uh, and that's it. And so you won't integrate, you won't insert in the header a reference, an explicit reference to this uh, predecessor because your header is no more modifiable because you constructed the proof of work. But you can, everyone can deduce from this header who is a predecessor? This is verifiable by anyone. Okay. And so, uh, okay. And now, what, what about this transaction? So you have this, you know the predecessor, okay? So you know the tuple. And so you know the partition, the, the set of transactions. You will take the set of transactions whose identifier uh, is the same as the label L prime and you will insert this transaction in the body of the block. And that's it. And these are not modifiable by anyone and verifiable by anyone. Uh, okay, and the transactions are partitioned because there are uh, tr um, uh, transactions, the, the identifier of the transaction are random. So um, they are um, random, they are evenly, uh, evenly distributed of the graph. Uh, you self-adapt to transaction demand, uh, thanks to splittable block and to mergeable block. And uh, yeah, you can have a rule. Uh, you can have fork. I'm sorry, but it turns out that you can design exactly the same rule, uh, arbitration rule, to to handle fork as in Bitcoin. What you do is that in presence of so concurrent chain are not split chain. It, it's very different. Different and split chain is is something that we want. You want to partition the, the load. A concurrent a block is just a block which is concurrent to an existing one, which share exactly the same label. Okay. And so the the rule when you have a fork is just to keep the one whose future is as a greatest weight, exactly as in Bitcoin. This is exactly the same, uh, which is nice actually because this is very simple. And so how it computed? So you, uh, the future of a block is a set of blocks that commit, that commit the presence of the block B, okay, in its header. And so you first, so assume that you want to uh, compute the future of this block. All these parallel blocks commit the presence of the block B, validate its presence, okay? So the future of block B, this one, contains of all these blocks plus the, the block that commit this block, etc., etc., etc. And this is exactly as in, uh, as in Bitcoin. Okay. And the very good thing of, of this thing is that in, in Bitcoin, a transaction is confirmed if six, if you assume 10% of malicious guy, is confirmed if it's followed by six blocks. In Sycamore, a block is confirmed by six block, uh, a parallel block. So it decreases the confirmation time very, very um, uh, largely. Okay. 
And uh, so, yeah, um, what we, we computed here is the probability of fork. So here is the probability of fork in Bitcoin. And here are the probability of fork in Sycamore. If you have a five chain, in uh, five chains, 10 chains or 20 chains. And what you see is that uh, the probability of fork uh, dro uh, uh, drops very, very, um, from, uh, uh, it's very important to drop uh, the probability of fork. And what we have done is assume you want exactly the same probability of fork of Bitcoin, okay? And it turns out that you, if you have, I don't know, 20 chain in the graph in Sycamore, then you will be able to generate uh, a block every 30 seconds instead of 10 minutes in Bitcoin. So it increases the rate at which a transaction will be uh, confirmed. Uh, I think it's uh, concluded my, uh, my uh, presentation. So we have presented a new way to organize both transaction and blocks and um, by building this, uh, this graph, this dedicated graph. Uh, we, uh, we have exactly the same security property as in Bitcoin, and, uh, but we enjoy higher throughput uh, by, uh, and self-adaptation to uh, the transaction demand. So what's next? We are currently implementing Sycamore, but this is very easy to do. And what we are doing is we are taking the Bitcoin blockchain and creating Sycamore with the real blockchain. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Hello, yeah. Um, could, you, could you go back some slides uh, to see the, 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 the graph? Okay. Yeah. Okay, this, that's it. This one? Uh, no, this no, one? Back. Yeah, that's, okay. that's the one. Um, so I, I more or less understood how you, for a miner to, to append a block to the, to the graph. So the, the way you choose the, which leaf block to append to, I think it's more or less clear and clever. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for the <laughs> for the good good uh, good insight. I think, um, but um, what's not clear for me is how the other nodes will validate uh, where the if the block is appended correctly, because I think other chains will evolve at different speeds probably. So we have maybe f uh, four chains, each one will would evolve at different speeds. I believe. So uh, at, 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 at some time, you, the miner will, of course, will run your algorithm and will append a block at, at some leaf. But as the, net, as the chain evolves, how, how will the other nodes check whether that block was appended in the right leaf node? So this is yeah. really... Okay. So difficult. first, because the, transaction, the identifier of the transaction are random, it turns out that the, leaf, the chain goes almost at the same speed. So this is something we have, we have seen, okay? But this is not the, the answer of your question. For, uh, for a miner to... You, you, might, you might run the algorithm and you might append, for, for by chance, you might, uh, might grow one, one chain because you actually append uh, the block to, to that chain yeah. by chance. Yes, and yes. They run with more speed than other chains. Yeah, but uh, I, I agree. But the thing is that with the distance, the, di the computation of the distance, um, this is the, 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 the block, uh, the leaf block to which will be appended the next block depends on the size of the, of the label, okay? So it means that a, a label with its short will have more chance to be closer to uh, the, the label even of the block. The, the, even though there might be a chance that randomly... Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And, okay, yeah. but this is two points, happen. and yeah. And the, the last point is that when you receive a block, you have these uh, tuples, and so you can just check locally if you see the blocks, okay, if you have locally these leaf block, when you receive a block, okay, 
you have this uh, header, you will look at... Uh, the at tuples are in the header. Exactly. If you have received the leave block, and this is valid, you accept it. If you do not have received one of the uh, leave block, you do not receive it, exactly as in Bitcoin. Okay, so the, 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 the leave nodes, the leave blocks are, are in, the, in the header of the block, so everyone can check. Exactly. Okay, so I, did, I didn't uh, get that. Okay, thanks. You also said that you are taking something random from the block, like the mean? hash of the block is random. Uh, you said the identifiers were randomly produced as the output of the hash function. I mean, what I'm doing is that, so, so what I do is that I take the hash of the block header. Exactly. And that and what I say is that I, I assume that my hash function is a random oracle. I mean, yeah, but it, 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 it be I control what goes in. I'm sorry? So if, if I control what goes into the random oracle... How do you control? Because, what do you control? Well, if I... So that, that's why I'm asking. If I am the producer of this block, you, you, I have flexibility what I put into the block. No. No, because you, your block your, your block must be correct, otherwise it will not sure, never be validated. Sure, but if, so you look you at, if you look at the way a Bitcoin block is produced, I can put uh, many different things in there. Yeah. In fact, in Bitcoin, I have to make sure the block has many leading zeros in the hash output, right? Yeah, this is so I can bias the output a bit. I can always do this if I choose the input that goes to the hash function. Maybe it's just, it's just yeah, trying to understand. Yeah, but construction by construction, uh, hash function uh, should output a random uh, bit string identifiers. No, 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 no. Maybe we should take it offline. So I think what you speak is about block withholding. Uh, no, no. I say no, no. I say if I have flexibility to put something in the block, I create the block. But here no, you don't have flexibility. I, you, okay, okay. You, you can't I, have that. I, I, no, I in Bitcoin I, I have a lot of flexibility. No. I, I can I, I take your transaction or not. Okay, <laughs> I, I, okay I agree with you, uh, Christian. Okay. But the, the <laughs> point is that in this header, you don't have any flexibility in the sense that you need to, to, to insert, just before, you insert the hash of the previous uh, leaf block. Yes. You insert the label, which you don't have any flexibility on yeah, that. Yeah and you insert the Merkle root, and you don't have any flexibility on that. And so all, all these information are, are, are something verifiable by anyone, and you cannot move this kind of thing. Yeah, if there's a unique predecessor of this kind, right? But if I put transactions into the block, then I can, but use the header of the block, not the block itself. You want to what? I'm sorry? If I choose the transactions that I have. Yeah, if, but... Okay, I agree, but it means that you will have to, to choose okay, a transaction so that the Merkle root satisfy an output of the... Uh, so because it's very easy to, to bias this, because if I have only a choice of two different things that I can take into a block, I can try twice on average, and I can make sure that the first bit of the output is always zero. No, no, but this is the end of... Okay. <laughs> but... If you don't want to, t okay. Uh, anyway, I think we should take this offline, okay? Okay. <laughs> Let's talk later. So, you, I, I think you agreed to take it offline, but just one, one thing I want to add, just following up on the question. Um, even in Bitcoin, um, so the, 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 there, is, there are lots of studies that show that actually the max entropy you can get from, from a block header is maybe 64 bits. Um, and I, I guess you have a similar construct in the sense that, yes, you, you have only flexibility maybe in the ordering of transactions. That, that will change the Merkle root. Yeah, sure. And you can omit some transactions whenever you want. Yeah, and sure. that will affect. And I guess you can borrow the same results then from, from these studies from Bitcoin. Um, there are lots of studies that show you how much entropy you can get from a Bitcoin block header. Okay. And I think that would be useful just to answer this question. Okay. So I actually had the same question as my friend there, uh, but uh, 
I have an additional uh, uh, continuation to that. So even if you have, for example, uh, I could see uh, different branches than, or different DAG from other, what, what others see. And uh, even if you have a thing in the header, but as a miner, I can choose the transactions that I have yeah. to append things to a specific branch. I'm not convinced, but uh, I'm not convinced because of the uh, no, because of Ash function. In principle, in Bitcoin, I don't see this as a big problem because it will take a lot of time to do the mining, blah, blah, blah. But this is exactly as in, in, in Sycamore. You have exactly the same mining. You need to find a proof of work. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly the same. Yeah, but in Bitcoin, you have only one chain. Yeah. So if I took my time to do mining, I'm I'm for sure I will I will see other blocks like uh, the blockchain will be ahead the head okay so I'm I'm delayed I am gonna start mining again because it's taking too much time but in your model I can be do the mining in parallel with others and everyone can add the blocks no yeah and uh, at the yes, same time exactly so I can add to my branch. Another guy can add at the same time to his branch. Yes, but and we can. I can choose the transactions so that it fits my branch, and I continue. Yes, but your block will not be accepted by the majority. I mean, if I receive a, a block which is very, uh, um, very back in the graph, I will not accept it because there are many other blocks which have been appended to the to the DAG. And uh, so uh, it's uh, exactly as in Bitcoin. I mean, if I receive in Bitcoin a, a, a block which is late, okay, I will not accept it yeah, because it's late. What do you mean by late? If I, I can mean have like it ten parallel branches, because it happens to a, a block which is already uh, followed by a new block. This is exactly the same thing. So I don't what, understand what you what's mean. the meaning of splittable block? You, you, there is a difference between a fork and a split. So this is what uh, I didn't get, probably. Okay, a splittable block is just a block which should be uh, followed by two split chain. Okay, one uh, split uh, chain will contain only transaction that start with zero, for instance, and the other one that will start with a transaction with identifier start with one. Okay, so this is, this is not a fork. This is something which is allowed. This is uh, the structure of the graph. So this is parallelism. Yeah, but here we have details. Who decide if this block is splittable? But it's verifiable by, by everyone because you have this chain. You look at the last C main uh, blocks. You compute the load. If the load exceeds this threshold, with this system parameter, this block, last block, must be split, must be split. It must be split, this is the rule. And if you receive a block which happens to a splitable block and that doesn't respect the, this rule, it will not be accepted. And, and do, which load is it? It's, is it my load or it's the network load? This is a load of the block, meaning this is the ratio between the number of bytes of the block over the uh, maximum number of a byte in the block, one megabyte before SegWit, for instance. So this is something which is verifiable by anyone at any time. So in, the, in, in your ledger, you, you can say this block is a splittable block. If I receive a block which doesn't respect the protocol, I won't accept it and everyone does, does the same okay so uh, the the discussion is very interesting but it's getting very technical i think for many so we can take this offline like uh, i have some people are interested in this <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you very much